Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Louis D'Souza here. Today is Monday, April the 1st. Happy April Fool's Day, 2019. <clears throat> it's 8 a.m. in New York, 5 a.m. in Los Angeles, 1 p.m. in London, Sydney, Australia. It's around 12 midnight, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And I'm, I'm very happy because we're off to being... We're off to a start of being on time, starting the podcast. Lately, there's been trouble with that. So this is a good way to start the week, Louie. I mean, just that you have to celebrate the little things, right? And and that's a good thing Absolutely. to celebrate. Yeah, that's a great thing to celebrate. So I'm going, yahoo, all right, we finally did it. We're back on being on time again. This is good stuff. <laughs> it's April Fool's, isn't it? Oh, no, we're, we're no, 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 no. <laughs> don't say that, don't say that. <laughs> no, that's focusing on what I don't want. No, no. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Actually, I did something today that I, I do fairly frequently that we don't recommend to our listeners, which is I check news. I check news headlines. I don't read a lot of it. I don't spend a lot. I certainly don't watch news telecasts, but I do check them. And I do it with two ideas in mind. The first idea being just to try to do it in a way that doesn't allow me to emotionally connect to any of it. Just to, to kind of like build up Great. The, you know, the boundary, so to speak. And the second one, because I have this perverted side of me that likes to laugh at stuff that's, that's absolutely crazy. It's in the news. <laughs> and one of the things that's in the news is in the Ukraine, they are in the middle of a presidential election. They just had their first round of voting. And a comedian, a nationally famous comedian, is in first place. He has no political experience. And he's basically in first place because he appears on a television show where he plays a politician, a president, who is behaving the way people think a president should actually behave instead of being corrupt and doing all the things that politicians usually do, <laughs> which I thought was just astonishing because, I mean, that's not normally what happens. I think it kind of shows how people are kind of fed up with the whole political thing, which is a good thing. I think it's a really good thing. Um, but it occurred to me. It, sound, what, it sounds, sounds a little bit like Donald Trump, isn't it? Oh, uh, well, yes, <laughs> he's, no. He's not that good sort a comedian, of. is that what you're saying? No, he's really not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's funny, and he has his own way of being funny, but we won't go into that. Um, <laughs> no, uh, what, what it made me think of was, you know, I, wanted, I, I was thinking about tying two concepts together that really don't go together, but I was, I was kind of like daydreaming, like, what if, what, what if this were to happen? What if... There were, I'm going to call it the Dream Big Party, which is essentially an LOA party. And the whole purpose of the party wasn't to elect candidates to office. What if the purpose was to enlighten it and educate people that they have complete control over their own lives? And they don't have to depend on governments or friends or anybody else to resolve their issues. And I'm thinking, well, you know, that, that's so insane. That might actually work these days. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds brilliant to me. I think let's get it started. <laughs> let's get it started, right? <laughs> I was let's just, get it started. In here. <laughs> I mean, I was imagining, you know, how the presidential candidate or the, or the the prime ministerial candidate or whatever kind of government it is, um, is is doing his or her campaigning. You know, they they get asked a question on some key issue of the day, and their response is. Uh, well, I really don't want to talk about... Here's what I want to ask you. What do you really want? <laughs> and just turn into an Abraham kind of conversation. I wonder how far that would go. That might actually do pretty well these days. Ten years ago, not so much. But today, that might actually do something. <laughs> well, I think as we were discussing, I think off, offline last time is... Uh, I, I think there needs to be a huge paradigm shift in politics. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Because it's uh, going nowhere fast at the moment. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say nowhere. I think it's it's definitely going somewhere. It's just not really a pleasant direction. <laughs> <But> <laughs> it, it's going where no one wants it to go, really. Um, <laughs> especially here in the U.S. Um, where no one has been before. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would actually be an improvement. Well, that, that's what they're doing in the Ukraine. <laughs> I mean, they're they're yeah. actually leading the way in in completely shifting their paradigm. Um, I, I mean, I really know nothing about this particular comedian, but I, I, I would say that it actually qualifies as honesty in advertising because mm. he admits he's a comedian. He, he admits that everything that comes out of his mouth is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll lighten politics up a bit. <laughs> it certainly will. 
I mean, can you imagine if more politicians admitted that what came out of their mouths was a joke? You know, and, and usually a bad one yeah. at that. That would be really, that'd be interesting. So I don't know. I, I just, that was just what I wrote, woke up with as a dream this morning. And, and I thought that would be pretty wild. I mean, it'd be, it'd be fun. It would make politics interesting for a change. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can, can you imagine politicians uh, or, or at least one set of politicians insisting on talking about what they want and positivity all the time? That would be so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with the opposition on this and that. <laughs> oh, I love it. It would be so it. much better. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, pol political scientists around the world would, would be you know, going into local emergency rooms with heart attacks because they wouldn't be able to handle it. <laughs> They'd be laughing so much. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it would be a healthy kind of heart attack, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Louise and I were uh, having a... Jumpstart the heart. Yes, right. <laughs> we were having a lunch yesterday with her brother and sister-in-law and having had a really nice time. We were, we were down on uh, the shoreline and uh, just, it, it, it wasn't, I mean, it's not uh, um, tourist season yet, so it was very quiet and a little bit on the cool side, but it was, it was just lovely. And the food was delicious, great, great seafood, absolutely delicious seafood. Anyone who's a seafood lover, this is the time of year. If you if you're going to pick a time of year to have seafood, have it in the spring because that's when all the the seafood meat is the tenderest and the juiciest and the flavorful. And oh boy, it's just oh, really really good. <laughs> but anyway, we were in the middle of a conversation about a variety of things, and at some point, politics came up, and uh, Paul, who is her brother, said something about I forget what it was. It doesn't really matter, and. I, I actually came at him with the line, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if, if we were, if the politicians were asking what we wanted instead, instead of what we don't want? And he had this look on his face like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> now, he and his wife know that uh, Louise and I are into the law of attraction, so it wasn't a complete surprise to him. But he, he made some comment about how, uh, what was it? How, how I think we have to go into Central America to clean things up down there or something like that. I forget. And I said to him, well, that's still focusing on what you don't want. What do you want? And he gave me this blank look. And I said, that's the look that you'll get from any politician if you ask them the question, yes, but what do you really want? And don't express it in terms of what you don't want. And he, he gave me another blank look. But he was paying attention. He, I had lost him. He, he was just giving me this look mm -hmm. like I'd never heard anything like this before. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I remember somebody sitting in front of Abram and they were saying, you know, I'm going to make millions, um, you know, with, with, with your ideas uh, and all the rest of it. And uh, it, it was about health. So I said, so Abram said, yeah, because I'm guessing that what you're doing is you're focusing more on what people want, not what they don't want. And he said, yeah, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. And I had to laugh myself silly because that is it. You that is it. Getting people to start <laughs> focusing on what they want. <laughs> it's quite an interesting challenge because we, we as a race or as a series of societies, however you want to look at it, we have this long history of looking at what we don't want a lot of the time. You know, so asking somebody to make that shift, we know what it's like when, when you know, somebody comes and asks us for help during a podcast or we help somebody on Facebook. That's somebody who actually has some understanding about how all this stuff works and, and you know, what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do. And they have a difficulty just dealing yeah. with a question of what is it that you really want. Mm -hmm. Put that question out to somebody who is unfamiliar with the concepts and, and you get a lot of blank looks. I, I wondered though what, what do you think happens inside the human mind of a person who is asked that question and who has at least some degree of receptivity? What do you think actually happens? I mean, do you think that it's like resonating on a deep level for most people? I think it definitely does uh, because your emotional guidance is kicking in and it's saying, well, now that you're focusing on what you want, I'm going to give you positive emotion. And mm, then yeah. that's what gives you the inside knowing that mm, this is right. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Yeah, no, it, it's definitely going to work that way. It's it's definitely going to resonate inside deeply with people. But uh, how how long, Walt, would you say you have really taken to focusing significantly more on what you want, what you don't, than, rather than what you don't want? It's an interesting question because 
you know, how much is significant? In, and it's a very uh, subjective question. It's not like yes. something like, there's no there's no objective scale to it. Because I I've, I can think of a few times over the last let's see what's it been twelve years now that I've been aware of how um, the law of attraction works to some degree, and I can imagine and remember a few occasions where I took you know large steps and other occasions where I took small steps. Mm. Uh, so, so which of those were significant? Well, I guess they all were. Really. Which, which is the which is the last? Well, how, how long ago was your last most significant? Yesterday, uh, push in that direction. <laughs> I mean, yesterday. I, it's like I'm going. Fair enough. You know, it just continues. <laughs> um, I mean, there's some days where I do feel like I kind of backslide a little bit, and there are other days where I feel like, boy, I even understand this more than I did yesterday. It, it's mm-hmm. it's it's like an ebb and flow, I think. It's like a drip feed. Hmm. Kind of, yeah. yeah. It's hmm. kind of, it's hard to just pick, here is the date where all of a sudden everything changed for me. There, there's no date like that. <laughs> I mean, is there one for you? Can you think of one where it just all made all the difference? Well, w- w- once I started listening to my first Abram Hicks, I was completely astounded that I didn't understand it clearly. I was, mm. you know, I've been searching my whole life um, for greater clarity on, on, on life. Yeah, mm-hmm. So literally from the age of eight, I consciously was asking my mom, what's truth, life, and love and God all about? And she was like saying, I don't really have the answer. You better go find that yourself. So <clears throat> I had this whole journey from from very young age. And so it was quite an epiphany for me after studying many different teachings and religions and groups and and really searching and read, read a lot of self-help books and all the rest of it. And the first time getting that clarity um, and then, you know, I've, I don't know anybody who's listened to more Abram Hicks YouTube videos than I have. Um, <laughs> I've spent thousands of hours on it. Um, and, and each time I'm just getting it clearer and clearer and clearer how to mm. present it better and how to live it better and, <clears throat> and all the rest of it. So um, I would say probably three years ago when I, when I bumped into Abram Hicks, it was, it was quite an, an epiphany era for me. Um, and it became clearer probably only after about a year or maybe a year and a half that it really like, oh, 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 <laughs> you know, this is how you practically put it into your life. This is how you use it. This is how you manifest. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even with my intensity, it still took me, say, a year and a half to to really get it under my belt. But then things just popped up everywhere, just like manifested on on all different levels so yeah it, it was interesting it was interesting very very interesting for me um fascinating personally absolutely I, fascinating i recall what my reaction was when i first read asking it is given that was my first exposure to it um, your first exposure that's a bit of a harsh first exposure <laughs> well you know i was never really good early stage about you know how to be guided where i really wanted to go so <laughs> i always came in the hard way <laughs> uh, deep end <clears throat> boom and and I remember two reactions. The first reaction was, "Why do they keep saying the same thing over and over again?" Because that's what it sounded like. <laughs> I, I couldn't di- I couldn't differentiate any subtle meanings from one chapter to the next. It's like this is just the same thing over and over again. I don't understand. It's very interesting. I asked my mentor the same question after reading all her guru books on her shelf. I said to her, "Why are they all saying the same thing?" She said, "If it works, you say it again." <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I like. And that. I like the answer. I yeah, still use it. That's very good. Yeah. The other reaction I had was, "Why hasn't the rest of society told me about this?" <laughs> I've been looking, um, I've been asking, know. <laughs> I've been asking for like my entire life. I, I was in my early fifties, actually around 50 when I first discovered Abraham Hicks. Well, no, that's not right. I was 50 when I discovered the secret. Abraham Hicks came around 52, 53. So that's uh-huh. like eight, eight or nine, nine or 10 years ago. Um, and when that happened, I knew that there were people who followed them. I knew that there were at least a hundred thousand who had bought a copy of the secret with Esther Hicks in the, in, in, in the original version of it. So I knew there were a lot of people out there and I still kept asking, why haven't I not heard this? Why has nobody really explained it this way? Cause even the way the secret explained it felt incomplete. Yeah. But the, but the way absolutely. A- Abraham Hicks explained it, it's like, ah, oh, they're filling in gaps. I didn't understand before the two ended stick. Oh, well, yeah, that makes a whole lot more sense that way. 
And I just kept yeah. asking the same question over and over again. Why is it? Uh, why didn't? Why didn't this ever come to me before? Why didn't I ever attract it? And then I finally realized what the answer was. I wasn't asking the right yeah. questions. The questions yeah. were all about, you know, <laughs> what, why, why, why is religion so terrible? Why am I so frustrated? You know, why should it have anything to do with spirituality? Those are all the questions that I, that I was dealing with. It was all on the negative end of the stick. Mm. I'm like, well, of course I'm not going to get the positive end of the stick. I was on the negative end of the stick. <laughs> And then I just kind of had a little temper tantrum. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we 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 don't uh, don't allow ourselves to suffer ourselves as a fool very gladly. You know. Yeah, right. Mm. <laughs> hit hit ourselves on the back. <laughs> yes. We are well. That's another thing that that's a theme that for me has been developing over the past year. But just how rough we can be on ourselves, and and I'm trying uh-huh. very hard. I'm practicing being kind. So, so, so take your shirt off. Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually can't because you know I have the salve on the back there and it's still healing. So, <laughs> what you aim for master. <laughs> I, that's right. <laughs> Well, an interesting, seriously though, all seriousness, um, an interesting side effect of trying to focus on being kinder to myself is that I find myself being kinder to others in the process. Absolutely. You know? And guess what? That's a law of attraction. When oh, you of course it is. Kindness, you get more kindness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it, it, it's really, yeah. it, it's significant. I think it's a very significant thing because so often you see in, like you see it in, in the Facebook uh, posts that people post, you know, there, there was one today a young woman posting how she has had her heart broken three times by the same guy. You know, what am I supposed to do about that? And mm-hmm. the, 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 th- the thought kept going through my head. Well, obviously you're focusing more and more on what you don't want and you keep getting what you don't want. So you keep focusing more on what you don't want. You know, yeah. Yeah. But trying to explain that to her is a little bit tricky because she's still in the mindset of, well, if I just keep focusing on what I don't want, it should turn into what I want, shouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, if <laughs> you start focusing on what you want. Yeah, there you go. That's the other half of it. That's that's the other. Follow the rocket thing. of desire that comes out of that. Mm. Know now what I don't want. What what do I want out of that? Wouldn't it be nice if I was more resilient? Wouldn't it be nice if um more people loved me in an open and frank and honest way. Wouldn't it be nice if <clears throat> um, I could allow the universal law of attraction to bring me what I want now that I'm focusing on it? Uh, and, wouldn't and, it be nice if... <laughs> and, and oh, by the way, I am now liking myself more. I am now loving myself more. And hey, yeah, and because I'm loving myself more... I'm loving others I'm more. I'm find that more loving individual. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a concept. Walt will come into my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it doesn't work. I'm already married. <laughs> Louise will have something to say about that, I think. But <laughs> I was talking more from my perspective to you. But um... Oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily hers. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about that. It's just that um, you're a like-minded person with a, a, a like-minded vibration. And, of course, because of the universal law of attraction, I'm going to find more people like that. And oh, right, right. It's just the way it is. Um, but to to get people to understand that, I, you kind of need to make the joke we've just done so that you can right. play it out so that people can start seeing the pieces of the puzzle. <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly right. As I have been working also on this project with Alex King, where we're creating this fictional podcast, it's also a reminder of when you of, of how you have to explain it the way you were just describing. Um, because when you, especially when you're writing fiction, uh, first of all, we're trying to write it as kind of like a radio play, old time radio. Uh, so you, you, you write a script and the script is mostly dialogue with some background sounds because it's sound only. And as mm-hmm. you're writing that, you have to write it in such a way that, uh, it, it, it's like what my sister explained to me very well. She says, you have to show rather than to tell the, mm. the show has to, to demonstrate what's going on rather than telling people what's going on in order to make, yeah, it, yeah. make it good. And you have to show people the contrast in in our terms um in dramatic terms is you have to get dramatic you have to focus on crisis and conflict um and 
that, that's an interesting thing because as you're trying to map out a script, you're trying to say to yourself, okay, here's this character or these, this collection of characters and they're in this place right here and it's not a happy place and they keep focusing on what they don't want and they keep getting the results that they don't want and they don't understand that that's happening. What I want to do is I want to lay out where they are right now and then I want to lay out a path where they end up learning this stuff and what happens mm. as they're learning this stuff. Yeah. That's quite a task. Alex and I are, I mean, we, we, we're actually about, uh, I want to say, three quarters of the way through the script for the first episode. But Sounds amazing. It, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. It's a real challenge. Um, I mean, the first episode. And this think, is all going to be done online, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we're going to do it like yeah. uh, it, it's just going to be a fiction podcast as opposed to a, a talk format or something like that. Um, mm. Yeah, it's like it's like a drama series, but in <clears throat> audio only, no video. Yeah, yeah, it sounds great. It yeah. sounds great. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I was, uh, I was listening to your podcast in connection with Psychic Phenomena. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, I didn't listen to it live, otherwise I might have popped on because there was something I wanted to say on that. Oh, what was that? <laughs> it's never too late. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> all, 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 all psychic phenomena only comes to you if you're a vibrational match. Oh, good point. Yes. Very good point. And that, that wasn't clearly um, stated there. So Tom Wells, he, he's obviously very, very focused on the psychic phenomena and he gets a lot of it mm -hmm. and so so you kind of want to put those two together and get people to really understand that where you focus your attention mm -hmm. you're going to open yourself vibrationally to experience mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the time i you know i'd never had an out-of-body experience but once i started going into a religion that taught out-of-body experience, then I started studying it and becoming fascinated with it and reading up on everything I could. And of course, I started having out-of-body experiences. <laughs> so, um, you, you know, you've got to start realizing, you know, some people have it spontaneously, but when if you look at their thought process, they'll be looking for freedom and whole other things that the out-of-body experience gives you. So it, it's really interesting once I started putting it down to all that, that I started appreciating the non-psychic experiences just as much because I realized that I'm attracting them just as much as I'm attracting anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the awe is, is, is in the thought manifestation, thought manifestation, thought manifestation, and seeing the correlation. And one of the biggest problems I had with karma many years ago was in, in the days I understood it as they taught it, um, was the difficulty of seeing cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have cause. I kill millions of Jews, but you don't necessarily see the effect. <laughs> okay. Um, so some people would say, okay, they come back in another lifetime and then they're born blind or or some physical deformity, and then that's the effect. So you don't necessarily see the cause and the effect. <clears throat> um, and once you start working with the law of attraction more and more and more, the cause and effect become very clear, mm. absolutely clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. And then, as I say, you, you appreciate everything that comes to you, be it a tiny little teddy bear which has just manifested for me <laughs> hello there <laughs> <laughs> and i thought that would be um something nice to to lighten up the podcast with <laughs> and um you, you know that you start getting into manifestations but they're so tiny you don't think so much about them anymore um, um but you you you, you start appreciating the clarity between what you're thinking and the manifestation, thinking and manifestation, and you just get into that really nice place of, wow, okay. So, you know, one of the things we're all looking for is just to be a bit happier. So let's, let's just focus more on happier things, happier things, and, you know, things working out for you. And, and what does that really feel like? And, and let me get into the vibration of that. What does it feel like? Okay, so this little nice little teddy manifested for me. So... That's what it feels like. It's just a manifestation. It's very simple. And then you start feeling how that feels, and then you start putting more of what you want into the vortex, and you start putting the right vibration of what it feels like to have the manifestations happen. Put it out there, and boom, 
the universal law of attraction listens to what you mean, not what you're saying, and you're getting closer to putting into the vortex what you mean, not what you say, so therefore the manifestation is not a big vibrational gap between where you are and where you want to be, and the manifestations start happening more and more often, and as they happen more often, of course, you get more confidence in the process, you get more confidence in the law of attraction, and it just goes into a roller coaster ride of, wow, manifestation, manifestation, manifestation of what I want. <laughs> And when it happens in manifestation, what you don't want, you know what it is. It's like, oh, yeah, I was thinking that. Mm, I was worried about that. Mm, okay. Now I understand. I get that manifestation. And then it becomes clearer and clearer. And then you start deciding to choose and what playground you want to play in. Mm -hmm. You have greater choice of the playground you want to play in in your life, in your world. And that is the fight. That is the glory of, that's the brilliance of the law of attraction is starting to be able to have some level of control because you're controlling your next thought about what you want. And it is a roller coaster ride after a while. It just gets, oh, yeah. wow. Oh. Who was saying, it was Tom who was saying, um, you know, I really enjoy meditation. I don't want to come out of meditation. And that's what it is. You know, you're so much in step three that this physical universe doesn't really have to matter that much anymore. I mean, <laughs> well, it does because uh, this is where we do our work. But but you're right; it doesn't have the yeah. It doesn't have the hold over it, us. It doesn't have the worry aspect yeah. to it as much as it used to, if at all, after exactly. a while. So yeah, um, yes, it matters, but it matters based on what I want rather than what I don't want. So. You said something else interesting, too, which I've had discussions with uh, other co-hosts about, um, the idea of always choosing to be happy. Um, and the question, uh, the complaint, I should say, that some people raise is, well, no one can be happy all the time. Stuff's going to happen, bad stuff's going to happen, and you're not going to be happy all the time. And it, it almost turns into kind of a silly debate after a while. But the thought that I always come back with is, well, yeah, you keep... If you if you focus on stuff going wrong, then stuff's going to go wrong. If you focus on stuff Absolutely. having a bad result, then it's going to have a bad result. What happens if you spend all your time focusing on being happy? And I, I think people kind of miss the point. It isn't that you can't focus on being happy all the time. It's just that people don't choose to. And there's well, nothing wrong what, with that. What, 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 what people are saying when they're saying you can't be happy all the time is they're saying you need – you're in the, in the physical universe – and I've come to understand that we had to play with the contrast. But I'm here to tell you today, my dear people, <laughs> that you can play with the contrast between hope and expectation. Yes. You don't have to play with the contrast between depression and happiness. Okay? That's right. That's called bipolar, you can play, by the way. But... Yeah, we're all bipolar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, yeah, play with that contrast. Play with the contrast, but realize that you don't have to play in the negative all the time. That's just it. It's what I call dipping your toe into the contrast rather than diving in deep. You, you don't have to dive in deep. You don't have to go for the, the lowest levels of feeling. You, you, you can stay in the upper levels. It's perfectly acceptable. And at that point, then, then some of the objectors say, yeah, but you're not, you're not actually happy at that point. Okay, fine, yeah. Have fun. <laughs> Enjoy yourself with that line of argument. <laughs> Clearly, you want to follow that that uh, that thought process. And, okay, more power to you. Go for it. <laughs> but for me, it's like yeah. You know, I, I mean, that, I, sure, there are times that I want to dip into the contrast. I think everybody does. That's part of being alive. I just don't think it's really a hundred percent necessary to um, to dive deep. I mean, not that you shouldn't dive deep, not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just not necessary. So that's, that, that to me is an important point. You can actually enjoy life in the physical plane without driving yourself crazy. There is a massive contrast that Esther was telling Abraham that she experienced between hope and expectation. Mm. She's saying that the, 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 the difference between the two is gigantous, it's huge. <clears throat> Yeah. It's huge. So, you know, even going from depressed to revenge is, is a huge gap. And, you know, it's well worth, um, you know, moving into that um, arena and and moving up the scale. But you really don't have to play on, uh, from, in, in the negative emotion to, to get contrast. You know, you can play within the positive and 
it, 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 it was quite enlightening to me the first time I understood that. It's like, oh, <laughs> why did I not understand that? Mm. It's so logical. It's so obvious. But a lot is not understood, especially in the Law of Attraction group. You know, I, I would put down to most people who are asking anything, I would say, understand the emotional guidance scale. Mm -hmm. Understand the emotional guidance scale. You know, if you if this lady who wants to go from having a heartbroken all the time, she does a focus wheel and starts building up the vibration to get to where she wants, she would get a far better result than, oh, you know, the next one will be fine and everything will always work out for you. You know, just don't believe that. And because we don't believe it, it doesn't manifest. So don't go there, you know. Get, fo get a focus wheel. And, and even if you don't love playing with focus wheels, understand the concept of the focus wheel. Really, really get it. And I wanted to say hi to Jason and Nasha. Yes. Um, good morning, folks. Yeah, Thank for you popping for on. Hello. Good morning. Absolutely. Please ask some questions if you've got anything specific. Yeah. Um, go into anything you want. You can go simply to a simple problem. You can go into spirituality. You can go into... Um, any arena you absolutely want. I'm quite happy to take questions on a huge range of areas. <laughs> but in the meantime, um, so, talk, talking about the people who are like, like the person whose heart kept getting broken over and over again, there, there are two aspects to that person that, and that person represents a wide range of people because they're all doing pretty much the same thing. Two aspects I want to bring up. One aspect is that person, even if you were if you were to ask them this, they would deny it. They would say, no, it's not true. But that person prefers staying on the topic of what they don't want. And we know that because they don't change the topic. And, and that's a hard concept. And the other point that I want to bring up is in order to change, like you said, they, they would have to, to, to do something like focus wheel. They'd have to change their focus. And the moment that anyone suggests that they change their focus, they're right back on the thing that they don't want again. So either way that, that you come at it, if they're determined to stay on that on that topic of I don't want this thing that, that I don't like that's happening to me, it's amazing how powerful people are. They will actually stay on that topic no matter what. Well, They'll I mean, it's, it's that great old saying humans have devised over centuries, uh, none so blind as those who don't want to see. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> and you can take a horse to water, but you can't make a drink, and all those sayings are just absolutely appropriate. They, you know, they, they explain exactly what you're saying there. Oh, Jason asked a question that, that you're going to love. You're, you're going to go on for about 10 minutes on this one, I think. How can manifesting <laughs> be my default setting? How can manifesting be my default setting? Um, Jason, I'm not going to go on for hours. The answer is very simple. Manifestation is always happening. Ooh, you didn't want that answer. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the truth. It's the truth. He, well, he qualified now, it. He let's qualified let's it. rephrase the question. Yeah. And I'm sure the qualification is, how do I manifest more of what I want? There it is. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So, Jason, it's easy. Go get somebody to tickle you. <laughs> <laughs> you need to come to that happier place, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Go get, I have never heard that particular piece of advice before. Go get someone to tickle you. <laughs> I was just thinking of my two-year-old, three-year-old. She loves tickling me. <laughs> it's good medicine, man. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is funny. Mm. Well, I have so, to admit, you surprised you me. I, You're heading in the right direction. <laughs> I, I thought you'd want to go on and on about that one, but you made it pretty quick. Yeah. Is and Jason right. laughing or is he throwing them, throwing pies at me? <laughs> uh, I think he's trying to, to, to decide what his reaction is. He hasn't actually come back with a reaction yet. Well, but there is the time delay as well. Yeah, that's true. Because um, they, they hear it about 20, 30 seconds after we say it. So, yeah. <laughs> so what, what would be great to get from Jason is, is kind of a snapshot of what, what kind of thought process this is. Would, would you say you are 90% negative or percent positive or is it 50 50 or where where are you at the moment it might it might be good to even for anybody just to look at their own life and saying mm. where am i on 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 spending thinking time on what i want and spending thinking time for what i don't want so yep, there's his reaction lol got it <laughs> <laughs> love it 
Absolutely. So what I was trying to point out, Jason, about laughing and, and being happy is being happy is the key to getting manifestations. Because when you're happy, your higher self is saying, I'm in alignment with being tickled. <laughs> okay. Then you're getting into a happier place. And when you're in a happier place, you're going to allow step three to happen more. You're going to get into the place where allowing what you want is going to start manifesting. So uh, care intensely about how you feel. Okay. Care intensely about how you feel. Now he says he's 80% he's... positive, by the way. Fantastic. So you want a hundred percent positive. So you want to play in that contrasting arena of hope and expectation or expectation and, and passion. Uh, so, you know, start, start realizing that you can play with the contrast in the positive, really get in there and milk it. So when you are having a happy experience, we are getting into that happy place, relive it in your mind. And that's what milking is. You take that good experience, you think about it again and you milk it. So you get, Feeling fantastic a lot of the time, and it's just a glorious <laughs> place, you can get that. <laughs> Not yeah. being a, a, a default, very, very exuberant person uh, and starting to get there is, is quite, it's quite a, a change in your own personality, you know. It's, it's quite a amorphosis, and people see it, people comment on it. Um, but more than anything, you commented on yourself because you're like, wow, you know, I'm so excited to get up this morning. I'm just like, I have a podcast coming and I've got to tidy this and I've got to sort that out and this is going. And I know it's all going to work out for me. And a few phone calls, oh, all those things are done. And wow, that was quick and easy. Mm. I'm expecting that. Oh, yeah. yes, I am expecting that now. I'm a human law of attraction person. I'm focused on what I want. Yeah, let's get rid of that old thinking. Mm, let's go. So, yeah. Actually, you mentioned for 10 minutes today. Um, not quite 10, no, but uh, you made me feel better. Let's put it that way. Because I, when you cut it down to like one minute, I felt like, oh, well, geez, I'm an idiot. I thought he was going to go for 10. But <laughs> <laughs> Walt. So anyway, uh, actually, I wanted to... The cat and nine tails are out again. No, no. <laughs> I, actually, I wanted to uh, ask you another question. Something that occurred to me the last few days. There are a number of people who are fairly advanced with being deliberate creators who like the idea of advocating a lot of different laws, law of attraction, law of action, law of this, law of that. One person, I think they had detailed 18 laws. Yeah, um, thousands of people that are talking about all these different laws. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, even our good friend Joel, uh, he doesn't do 18. He has like two or three of them that he likes to have. And my reaction is, I think people are just muddying the waters with all these laws. Personally, I completely I, agree with you. I think we need just I'm, one. Give, 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 give me one of them. Give me one of them that they usually throw at you. Uh, well, one that I can actually feel okay about is one that Joel brings up, the law of action. Mm -hmm. He is, is an action individual. It's very important to him. I understand that. Um, well, so what I is action? I, I think actually what, it would qualify as other people would call inspired action. In other words, you, you start yes. feeling good about something and then you take an action based on it. I think that's what he really means yeah. by it. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's just take that. What is action? Action is, is, is a process of step one, two, three. So step one is focusing on what you want. Mm -hmm. Step two is it's instantly manifested. Step yep. three is allowing it to manifest. So you're, you're trying to get the flow between those three going and of it's all the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can break down into different words. And you and I both like to just knuckle down to bare basics, bare basics, bare basics. And, yeah. you know, we could just say, focus on what you want and focus on what you don't want all through our podcast. And we'd be happy because <laughs> that's what we mean. <laughs> but but you, you, you also come to the understanding of appreciating the... The, the way human have created all these words and then you can start playing with them and, and, and you can play with them based on the on, on your focus of what you like about them, not what you don't like about them. And like action doesn't appeal to you so much as inspired action and then you get into enjoying action because inspired action makes a huge amount of sense. Okay. And when you're feeling good about an action, that is when you go for it. When you're feeling bad about it, you sit back and you think a bit more because that's not the action you should do. Mm. So 
stay away from it. Um, so yeah, understanding inspired action is, 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 is fantastic. I, I'm just curious about all these different laws that people put out. And I say that for a couple of reasons, not just because I find them to be superfluous for the most part, but because Joel loves to point out over and over again, I am very analytical. And I fully admit hmm. that I am an analytical person. Um, I, I tend to <clears throat> think first and, and, and feel second. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's the good part of that? What, what, why is that good? Uh, well, I'm not sure uh, I was trying to define it in terms of good or not good. I was simply saying that's where I am. But the, the point that I well, was Well, I'm trying up... to get you to be very comfortable with the great, brilliant Walt analytical mind. Oh, I think I am pretty comfortable with who I am, to be honest. Ooh. Yeah, I'm pretty confident, confident and comfortable with it. Because, well, first of all, I don't want to try to change it. I don't want to change who I am. I, I want to be who I am. Um, and second what, is, of all, what does analytical mean? Analytical means thought. Thought, any thought creates a feeling. So uh, any deep thinking person is, is, is full of feelings. You mm -hmm. can't remove that. Yeah. I used to get these people that said to me, oh, they're a very um, emotional person. And I said, great. So what, what, what you're telling me is that you get mental people and emotional people. Yeah, that's right. And I said, no, you don't. You get emotional people are feeling emotional type of thoughts. And they're thinking just as much as the next dude. Okay. And the mental person is just thinking more mentally type mm -hmm. thoughts and they're mm -hmm. feeling appropriately on those mental thoughts, there is no separation between thoughts and emotion. You can try, but a thought triggers an emotion and an emotion triggers thoughts and it goes in a circle. And it's important to understand that because when you start trying to rip them apart and say there's emotional people and mental people, yes, there's some accuracy in it, but don't, don't break the chain. Understand that an, a, a, a nice person, a heart person is going to be somebody who's thinking nicer thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, I think that's true. And, and that kind of goes and, where I was going with it, because I, I was pointing out, or I was leading up to pointing out, that this, despite the fact that my tendency is more toward the analytical first, I have little or no interest in establishing all these laws, which would be a very analytical function. That would be a very analytical yes. thing to do, to create all these categories, and I yeah. have no interest in doing all that. So so it's not necessarily analytical. You're You're more of... Let's use a KISS method. Yeah. Okay. So you really want to just keep it simple. Yeah. And that's what your analytics has taken you to. Let's yeah. keep it simple. Let's Absolutely. Keep it simple. Let's just keep it simple. And I'm in exactly the same place and I'm in the same thing. I want to keep things simple, really clean and simple. Um, scientific and I realm, feel happy. In the scientific realm, I'm a fan of Occam's razor. The simplest. Uh, define that to me, um, because I, I, I've heard the words, but I, I'm not clear on it. Oh, it, it's basically kiss. It, it, it's the, the, oh, it's the, kiss. The, okay. The, the simplest answer is usually the, you know, the accurate one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, one guru once said to me, he said, if somebody's explaining something in a complicated way, it's probably not going to give you much relief or release. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's true. It's true. <laughs> and it's true. Every time I've had an aha moment, it's because of something that is really simple. I mean, the law of attraction, once you grasp it, is incredibly simple. Oh, God. And it yes. can allow you and I just to say, you know, it, 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 you know, just there's one law, and it's the law of attraction. That's it. Um, I had a debate recently about the law of attraction and God, and I see it's quite often on the group as well. I'm quite happy to have broached that one because. Um, and, and I did actually, um, I'm not sure if I've done it on, on live, but I know we talked about it afterwards. Uh, so a, a lot of people get stuck with, is the law of attraction God? It's like the craziest question I've ever heard. Of. Yes. Uh, um, I can understand where they're coming from. I truly yeah. can. Um, sure. so you, you get people so enthralled in believing in the law of attraction is going to solve all your problems that it, it kind of replaces God in a way for some people. And I can understand why somebody would ask that question. So uh, to break it down the way it's taught is everybody has a non-physical self. 
and that non-physical self takes on a physical body in the physical universe, but the two live together. This is the point that is often missed. Mm. Your bigger part of any individual is actually the non-physical part, and it's with you all the time. And you know mm. it's with you because of your emotions. That higher part of you is giving you positive emotion to say you're heading in the right direction, giving you negative emotion to say not. Now, your non-physical self, my non-physical self, and every other individual on the planet's non-physical self, and every animal, and every plant, and anything, even a rock has a non-physical self. Wow. Even yes. a diamond. Okay. So all these non-physical parts together is what we would call God. Okay. And these non-physical parts decided to create a contrasting universe, which is the physical universe, so that we can expand, so we can come and play with it. So the biggest part of that non-physical non universe is the law of attraction. All right. So the law of attraction is created by us, higher selves, which is God, if you want to call it that. So our higher selves created the law of attraction. So if you wanted to know the relationship between God and the law of attraction, you created it. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's right. Actually, if you want to uh, fully understand the relationship between us and God, because we're obviously a part of that thing that you're describing as God, uh, Neville Goddard is really interesting for that because he will equate God with Jesus, with consciousness, with imagination, with the kingdom of heaven, with, I mean, he has like this long list of things and they're all God. And you, and you work through them the way he works through them and you, you follow his thinking and so forth. Sometimes his thinking is a little bit out there, but it's still, it's a worthwhile exercise because when you're done, you really do appreciate the fact that we are all God and that that is all that there is because source energy is all that there is. And like you said, we created this world. Now, here, here's a little mind bender for you, okay? We, we all kind of collectively in our non-physical place came together and created this world. But there's an interesting um, paradox that goes with it, which is we all live in individual worlds. So we all yes. collectively created a bunch of individual worlds. <laughs> <clears throat> and and that will mess with your head for a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And even though I'm speaking to Walt and I uh and listening to him and, and replying to him, most of my effort and time and thought is spent on my relationship to what I know versus the tiny little bit that I got from you. So I'm spending more time with myself than I'm spending with even you than than we in conversation. Yeah. So I do live vast majority of my life in my own world and that's and, and vice versa for me too brief 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 times we bump into others right um another good question from jason can we manifest good for our loved ones uh jason do you want to invade your loved ones free will do you want to control them <laughs> invade i love that oh <laughs> 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 so, 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 Jason, let me put it this way. You can hold um, – the best way to help a loved one is to remain ha happy and positive because then you are in alignment with your higher self, which is in alignment with the power that creates worlds, and that alignment will be the best gift you can give to them. And that alignment, because it's near them, they will tend to rise to the level of alignment you have. Then you didn't invade their space. All you did is focus on your own alignment. QED, yeah. Not quite. <laughs> There's a real world experience that I've had that uh, really nails home for me exactly what you're talking about there. Um, because as I've told our audience before, I was involved in founding an alternative school back in 2002 based on a model mm, that Abraham I must, likes must, a lot. Must, must, must have a, a great chat on that at some point. Sure, stage. yeah, we'll be glad to. Yeah. You, you get me started on that and you won't stop me. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the tenets of that is How that, about I interview you next time? <laughs> sure, okay. <laughs> one of the tenets of that particular school is that there are no teachers, there are only staff members. And the reason yeah. is the kids are in charge of their own day. So the kids get 
to decide at any time whether or even that, if. That, that's because it's a community con group. Right? Yeah, 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 that's it, yeah. <laughs> Comrade <laughs> Stalin created this one, right. <laughs> no, no, that's actually not it at all. <laughs> uh, no, the, um, the, the kids are in charge of their own day, so they decide whether or even if they're going to learn anything, and if they are, what are they going to learn, how are they going to learn it. And on those occasions where they need to get help beyond what even they can teach each other and themselves, they'll reach out to a staff member and say, can you help me with X? I'm trying to understand X. And then the staff member says, sure, I'll be glad to help you with that. When you're a staff member at a school like this, you have to change your mindset compared to most schools because in most schools, the adults are in charge. You have to let go of that as a staff member. You have to simply be a resource person. And when I think about this question, that you raised, Jason, in this context, I realized that the only way to help somebody that you love is to be a resource person for them. In other words, they have to come to you when they want to come to you. You have to be willing to let them go their own way until they're asking you a question or asking you for help. And when you approach like that way... ready, the, the master appears. There it is, right there. Yeah, that's, it. that's literally what the, that educational model um, exemplifies. And it's a very effective approach, I might add. It's really, really effective. But it is a mind kind shift. Of kids that come out of that are going to be oh. incredible. Oh, just amazing. Unbelievable. I mean, the, the uh, school that started it all, it's called the Sudbury Model because it was started by the Sudbury Valley School, which is near Boston, Massachusetts, in the Framingham Valley, um, Framingham area. And uh, the first... Well, they, they put out a number of books and videos and so forth to help explain how the model works and so forth. One of the first books that they put out started the story of a girl who had been through, had been in the school throughout her entire time. She hadn't uh, come from a public school and gone to the private school. She was there the entire time. I'm pretty sure that was the case. Um, and she had reached the point that we normally call graduation. They actually have a different way of looking at it, but I won't go into that moment she was going to leave school and she was ready to, to uh decide what was next in her life and for her what was next in her life was to go to a university that's what that was going to fit where she was trying to go and in fact the university she had in mind is very close to where louise and i live here in connecticut um so she's heard about this school from one of the staff members and the staff member said you know this is this is what you've been looking for this is exactly it and so she looked up you know, the information oh yeah this is exactly what i want so she calls the school up calls the admissions department and says, yes, uh, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I, w I want to apply to come to your school. And the very nice woman at the other end of the line says, oh, I'm so sorry, we just passed our admissions period, you'll have to apply again next year, but thank you for calling. And so the next day, the girl calls up and says, hi, I want to come to your school. I've, I've read all about it, and I, I think your school is great. I'd love to apply. And the same woman says, oh, you're the one I spoke to yesterday. Um, that sounds great. Unfortunately, you're past the admissions period. You'll have to apply next year. So the next day, the girl calls up and says, hey, I really want to come to your school. This school's out for about 30 days. Every single day, without fail, she's calling and saying, hey, I really want to come. I want to apply to your school. Finally, the dean of admissions hears about it and says, who is that anyway? Oh, she's a really nice girl. She's from the Boston area. She wants to apply, but of course, she's past the admissions period. He says, get her in here. <laughs> Let's interview this person. Let's see what she's like. So they get her in for an interview. They squeeze her in. All they have for them is 15 minutes. That's all they have available in the schedule. They squeeze her into a 15-minute window. 15 minutes, it turns into 45 minutes. Nearly an hour later, she and the dean come walking out of the office arm in arm over to where the mother is waiting in the waiting area. And the dean says, I really hope your daughter comes to the school. She is exactly who we're looking for. Set her up for uh, an application. I mean, and that's what, that's what you get when you have kids who are in total control of their lives. It, nothing is going to stop them. Stop nothing. Them, absolutely. Nothing. Yeah. It's tremendously empowering. So the best way you can help a loved one, like Louis said, put out the love. Make it clear that you're there to love them and then get out of their way. And if they ask you for help, by all means, give them help. But until they ask for it, stay in your own lane. Yeah, it's it's uh, something we haven't been brought up to do. So no. it, it's something we need to learn. Yeah, something we need to learn. Yeah. I, I hope important. that answered your question, Jason. I, I have to warn you, if you really do want to do a show on Sudbury, this could go well over an hour. <laughs> I can I can talk for hours about the Sudbury model. I mean, it's just uh, yeah. 
It's I'm, I'm curious about um, stories about people that have come out of it, that have that have, that have gone into the world and, and things that they've done. That would be really cool to hear. They, they actually did a book that was a collection. It was a statistical collection of what people who graduated from the original Sudbury Valley School ended up doing. Um, mm. And I, I remember going through it. It's very dry material. Like any, it's like a book, book of statistics. It's just very, very dry. But I remember going this through is it. To, this, this is to, to hit the, 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 the critics on the head. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really sure what their purpose was, to be honest. Because mm. if the critics wanted to be, were going to be hit on the head, they'd have to really like reading dry material. <laughs> I mean, really, really dry. <laughs> But uh, no, I, I took it out of, of the book and I started creating little spreadsheets to add stuff up. And I, f I found a couple of really interesting things. One is that if you, well, I also found some statistics from the broader population. If you look at the broader population here in the United States, approximately, depending on what time period you look at, somewhere between one and 5% will tend to be entrepreneurial at some point during their life. Mm -hmm. If you look at the population coming out of the Sudbury Valley School, it was about three to five times that number. Wow. Yeah, that was my reaction. Like, wow, <laughs> that's just huge. <laughs> I mean, we're talking like maybe a fifth of the, of the school becoming entrepreneurial. And, and you look at that, you say, oh, my God, that's just incredible. The other thing that's interesting is that a, a much smaller percentage than you would expect choose to go to university. I mean, hmm. for, for most people coming out of school, that's the thing that you have to do. You go to a, a college because you need to get a degree so you can get the right job and all that kind of thing. And, and there is a good reason to go to university, though. It's the social oh, I'm not saying there reason, is. that's the only one. Yeah. Well, there's also <laughs> don't I, I won't uh, put down credentials. People, you know, people buy credentials, so I I can appreciate trying to get the, the credential. I'm not saying that I want people myself. I want to work for. <laughs> well, work no, with. no, but. But nevertheless, if you're going out into you know, the, the, the typical real world area, credentials are, are helpful to have. And indeed, there are a lot of kids who come out of the subway system who do go after the credentials. Do they do it in the way that most people do it? No, not at all. <laughs> but they, you know, they, they tend to do shortcuts. They, they tend to do things in one year that takes other people three years to do. But nevertheless, they will do what it takes to get the credential. The interesting thing, though, is that the ways they go about doing it first of all, cut right to the chase really quickly. And they, they find really creative ways to get around requirements. It's really interesting. <laughs> Phoning up 30 times. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Just just amazing what will happen. Um, but the part that I love, and, and I don't have enough time because we're, we're running out of time, yeah, yeah. Is, is the people who go into a subway school who have been through rough times, who have been harmed perhaps in some way, who have been uh, abused in various ways, been through the system, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing, and the result of what comes out of that. that That's probably the way we start off the conversation next week if you want to talk to Sudbury, because yeah, that, that's probably, Absolutely. for I'm, me, that's the best I'm, part. I'm really, really, really keen on finding new ways of, of educating anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. so, um, because, you know, I wanted to, I'm wanting to start a, uh, pod, um, a, a training sessions with, about the law of attraction on mm. beginners, intermediate, and advanced. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I wanted to find the most effective way. So um, just listening to, to that next week. So if okay. anybody's interested, um, I'm just at the moment just putting out a curiosity, if anybody's listening to this, um, louisdesouza at gmail.com. Wing, wing me an email. Um, Walt will put it down for you uh, if it's not already there. Absolutely. It'll also be on LOA today. Uh, if, if you're interested in coming in, I wanted to, I want some, some guinea pigs to start off with so I can play with it. Need to be able to do audio. It's going to be audio, no homework. Um, it's, it's simply going to be shoring up everybody's understanding on a beginner's level, intermediate and advanced level. So if you're interested, please send me a, send me a, a quick thing. I'm, I'm just at the moment putting feelers out to see what, you know, what the interested interest uh, level is. Um, and, you know, I'll go into more, more detail next week. I'm putting my website together up t um, together for that, et cetera. So I'm, I'm quite excited about it. Excellent. I'm really looking forward to doing that with people. Yeah, cool. yeah, we'll talk about that next week, too. So that, that's a good topic as well. Um, just a reminder, too, if you're not, not yet a subscriber, please become one. Just go to LOAToday.net. You'll see how to do it. And with that thought in mind, thank you very much, Louis. Thank you to our audience as well. And we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks, Walt. Carpe diem. Damn.